All right, today we're here, and I got Carter, I got Connor, and I got Jackson. And uh, we're going to do a Bible study today in Hebrews chapter 7. We're going to look at verses 23 through 27. So right now, hit pause, go to Hebrews chapter 7, verse 23 through 27. All right, so today as we get started with this passage, the, the, the title of this passage is Jesus is the perfect way. Jesus is the perfect way. And before we get started, we're going to start with prayer. So I'm going to pray for us, okay? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the great God that you are, for the Savior that you are. And we thank you, God, that you died on the cross for our sins and saved us. Lord, we come to you, Father, asking you, Lord, to be with us during this Bible study to help us to understand how Jesus is our priest who lasts forever, to help us understand that Jesus is our final sacrifice, and help us understand that Jesus fulfilled the law so that we can have salvation forever. Lord, we love you, God, and we thank you for the great, almighty, saving God that you are through the blood of Jesus. Amen. All right, guys, today, before we get started, I want to ask you a question. All right, it's a big one. How do you feel about change? Hands you don't have to raise your hand. Just how, so do, how do you feel go. about change? Just go. Just go. Just let it rip. Uh, I like I like change because it can bring things new and it can bring things good. Okay. What else? Sometimes I like change because you might get something bigger and newer that you barely have it brilliant. Okay. It switches things up than what you're used to. Okay. So, um, what about uh, what do you not like about change? It it can make things worse for you. It can make it to where you don't like it, and make things and it make it can make it to where you're not having the best of a day, and you can be upset. Okay. Um, change can like like maybe you're at like a medium house, and like you go down you change one and then you go down to a smaller house okay so you go something bigger to smaller so all right carter you got anything it would get probably boring because you're just doing the same thing okay so let's think about this how many of y'all ever seen the iphones right all right so i got this iphone se all right which is an older iphone you cannot even get service on this iphone anymore okay all right, we tried. I called the cell phone company. I said, I want to switch this cell phone on. And they said, we can't turn it on because it's so old. So then I had to get this new phone, the iPhone 11. Now, this isn't the fancy dancy three camera phone. This is only two, two cameras. I can only afford two. I can't afford three, okay, on my phone. So this camera has more storage. This camera has more options. This camera has, uh, has better features, so it, I can talk on it longer. The battery lasts longer. This, camera is, uh, this phone is bigger, right? So this phone is better. So this is an example of change for the better. Even though this phone was good for a while, right? Cause, yeah. Because when this phone came out, this phone didn't exist. So this phone was good for a while, but there had to be a change. So what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at how some things changed in the Bible. Now, one of the things that we need to know about the Bible is when we see things change, who's always in charge? God. So, God planned for things to change for us, right? Mm -hmm. Did God change? No. No, God didn't change, but he had the changes planned for us before they even came along. So, we're going to look at two things today in the book of Hebrews, okay? We're going to look at how, um, we're going to look at the change God has from us from the old law to the new law. And from using priest to Jesus being our forever priest. Okay? So let's look at this passage. And we've already broken up some things for y'all to read. So let's look at this passage in Hebrews chapter 7. And uh, we've already got you. Carter, we're going to let you start reading verses 23 through 24. And then um, Connor, you're going to jump right in and read verses 25 and 26. And Jackson, you're going to jump in and read verses 27. Okay? All right. So Carter, go ahead for us, bud. And they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, 
because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest truly meets our need. One is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. All right, Jackson, verse 27. Who does not need day? Who does not need daily at the high priest to offer up sacrifices for for him his own sin, and then for the people for the he did one for all when he also up himself. Okay, so a couple of things to know about the book of Hebrews. All right, when you look at the whole book of Hebrews. One of the things is Hebrews helps us understand how Jesus completely and perfectly paid for our sins. That's what the book of Hebrews did, okay? So as we look here in this passage, one of the things that we see about Jesus is Jesus makes us complete, okay? How do you like to get half of something, all right? Would you rather have a half of a chicken nugget or a whole chicken nugget? Oh, yeah, I want the whole chicken nugget. They're not very big, big to begin with, all right? So let me ask you this. You're at Chick-fil-A. Would you rather have half an order of six chicken nuggets or go ahead and give me the whole 12? The whole 12. Yeah, I want the whole 12, right? Yeah, y'all can answer that, all right? I want 12 chicken nuggets I would probably get the big 30. Right. The big 30? Yeah, I could, <laughs> who could scarf down the big 30? Be honest. I didn't even know there was a size 30 chicken they got, nuggets they yeah they're like huge containers okay all right well let's go on we got it we got to look through this bible verse all right so what this bible passage is breaking down okay we talked about it a little bit ago but it's breaking down the change from the old law to the new law okay now you can find the old law in the first five books of the bible of genesis exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy and the old law was given to the Israelite people, remember the Hebrew people, right? That Moses brought out of Egypt. It was given to them to remind them that God is holy, okay? It was given to them to remind them that they weren't perfect. Is anybody perfect? No. Romans no 3. But God. No one but God. Romans 3.23, what is that? Y'all know what that one is? For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's right. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I know that one. So, it was a reminder that nobody's perfect okay so that's what the law did so the law there were certain things when you read in the books of exodus leviticus numbers deuteronomy the law was the the law was things that they were to do so they weren't to eat certain foods they didn't eat pork because it was a reminder that they need to be holy and a pig's a dirty animal isn't it been a pig show pig's a dirty animal okay but, but it's good. We can eat pork now because Jesus died on the cross and fulfilled the law. Okay? But at that time, it was a reminder not to eat that animal because God's holy and we want to be holy. There was reminders of how to wash their hands certain ways and to clean themselves. And they did that. There was reminders and, and ways that they were to interact with each other. So if somebody uh, stole something, there was things that they followed to deal with that person that stole something. And that person had to repay the person who they stole it from. If somebody died, there was ways that they dealt with. Somebody was murdered. There was ways that they dealt with that murder in the old law that we don't do the same way today. Okay? So what took place was is when Jesus came, all right, and this was God's plan all along. God's plan was for the people to work. Okay? And when they, when they, when they messed up in the law, they were to give a sacrifice. What kind of sacrifices did they give in the Old Testament? An animal. An animal. Sheep. And it had, to be a, it had to be blood. Why did it have to be blood? Does anybody know? Because Jesus let his disciples drink his blood and that cleans. Yeah, well, the, the grape juice, it was the, the purpose of it. Jesus said, this is a symbol of my blood. They didn't drink his blood, oh. but they said it was a, a symbol of his blood. Because what had to take place is when we sin, there had to be the shedding of blood for our sins. So when they, they came to the priest and the priest had to give a sacrifice for the sin, when he gave a sacrifice for the sin, there was a shedding of blood, Okay. But that was an animal. So the old law was for the purpose to remind the people that Jesus was coming, that the Messiah was coming, and that they had to repent of their sins and ask God to forgive them of their sins. But they always had to bring a sacrifice. But then Jesus comes on the scene, right? Jesus comes on the scene, and when he comes, he fulfills the law. 
So G, we look to Jesus to remind us that he makes us clean, not the washing of our hands and not what we eat, but Jesus that is the one that makes us clean. So now we no longer had to do these things, okay? And so we now have hope in Jesus that he saves us, right? Okay? So let me ask you this. If Jesus saved us and we no longer have to do some of the things that are in the old law, like washing our hands or sacrificing a sheep, do we still have to f obey Jesus? Yes. yes. Yeah. What are the two greatest commandments? You said it earlier, Connor. Uh, re uh, love Jesus with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbors as you love yourself. Yeah. So there are still things that we do because we love God, because God's in our heart, right? So things that we do, love others, love God. You know, in the Old Testament with the old law, there would be a checklist of things that we would do. Let's say, give you an example. You would say, all right, I can check off today I've been a good boy. I read my Bible. I prayed to God. I gave a tithe to church. I went to church. And you would just check this list off and say, well, I've done everything I was supposed to do today. That's the kind of the way the law was. But today, do we, need, do we have to get a, a book out and say, I checked off and read my Bible? No. no. Why do we do it? Do we do it to check it off or do we, we do it because it's what we want to do, right? We do it because it's what we want to do. That's right. We, we, that's the way we do in our relationship with the God. There's a verse, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 6 through 7. I'm just going to read it to you, okay? It says, Not with eye service as men pleases, but as bond service of Christ, doing the will of God from our heart. You got that? We do it from our heart with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Okay? So that means we do it because we want to do it. I'll give you an example. You give your mom a hug. Why do you, do you give your mom a hug because you have to or because you want to? Want to. Yeah, because you love your mama, right? <laughs> My mama's coming here tomorrow, all right? And you know what? I'm excited. I get to give her a hug, okay? All right? I'm excited about that, all right? So y'all need to be excited. When we, we, it's something we get to do, okay? Now, there's certain things we don't want to do, but we have to do. Like, they say clean your room. Do you ever want to do that? Sometimes. Sometimes? Well, no, we, when it gets we, really messy. No, but we never really, we gets really messy because we don't clean it to begin with. Yeah. But we have to clean our room to keep it in order, right? So, sometimes we don't, sometimes there's things we don't want to do, but we do because we know we have to do it and it's the right thing to do. Okay? So, that's part of our, in our heart of doing the right thing. Let me give you two quick, let, let's follow up and just review right quick to make sure we understand, okay? So the old law, all right? So with the old law, we have to work to be holy, okay? You got that? But with Jesus fulfilling the new law, all right, Jesus makes you holy. And he makes us holy by the shedding of his blood, and we talked about that already. With the old law, you had to work for forgiveness, right? But with the new law, Jesus saves us by grace. What does that mean to be saved by grace? To be um, saved by grace? That means it mean? to accept Jesus in your heart. Okay, well, accept Jesus in your heart. But have you ever heard of grace being defined as getting something you don't deserve? Yes. Yes, it's yeah. God. Grace is God's riches and how God saved us. Yeah. So when you, so when you get something by grace, you don't, you don't earn it. You don't work for it. It's a free gift yeah. to you okay all right so that's something that we want to understand today is that when jesus died on the cross for our sins he fulfilled the law we didn't have to work to bring the sheep to the altar we didn't have to work uh to to check off our list to make sure we did everything right we didn't have to do that jesus saves us by his grace we get it we don't deserve it now the work of the law had to be repeated okay so you had to keep bringing sacrifices. So if you were to go home tonight, if we were in the Old Testament law, if you were to go home tonight, you were to disobey your mom and dad. Fifth commandments, honor your mother and father, right? So guess what you'd have to do? You went and you gave a, I say you gave a dove for your sacrifice because that's all you could give. You're a little kid and that's all you could give. You gave a dove for your sacrifice. You couldn't give a sheep? You got to come back. You could if you could afford it. But you're a little kid, so maybe a little kid would give a dove. If you could, you would have to come back the next day and give another dove because you disobeyed your mom, right? It's kind of like this. Your mom and dad say, hey, listen, I want you to sweep the floors and mop it. And so you spend an hour sweeping the floors and mopping it, and you get it as clean as you can. Then your brothers or your sister comes in, 
and they trans they 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 tromp mud all through the house. Okay? And then you have to do the floors again. Would you want to do that? No. See in the Old Testament law that's what it was like. So it was it you was temporary. You had to repeat dad, it. Probably that hey, they did it. Yeah, but your mom and dad would say you got to do it again. All right? That's just the way it works in this story, okay? So then Jesus fulfillment of the law is Jesus is forever. So once Jesus saved you from your sins, he has saved you forever. Now you still you're still going to sin because we're not perfect, right? Yes. So is it okay to sin? No. No. But when we do sin, we ask God to forgive us of our sins, but Jesus paid that sacrifice. He's not being he doesn't have to be hung on the cross again, okay? So Jesus is forever, all right? So here what they're talking about in this passage, they're talking about the priest, right? So as we talk about priests, in the Baptist church, we don't have priests because Jesus is our priest, okay? We have preachers, and preachers are men like myself and Brother Clark and Brother Christopher and Brother David and Brother Toby, uh, and there are other preachers in other churches. The role of the preacher is to teach the Word, to minister to the people and love on them, and to pray for them, and to lead the church in ministry, okay? But the priest's role is to be what we call an intercessor. You remember reading that word in the passage about an intercessor? Let me, let me, let's back up and read right quick. Let's open up our Bibles. Get out your Bibles and let's look at it right quick. All right? What boy? In verse 25, it says, Therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession. Okay? So the priest, the role of the priest was to be an intercessor. An intercessor is someone who goes between two parties, okay? So let me give you an example <coughs> of an intercessor, all right? How many of you know about Abraham Lincoln? All right. Okay. Abraham Lincoln was the president during what war? The Civil The Civil War, all right? So he was the 16th president, all right? So... There was a Union soldier who was going to the White House. He needed to meet with Abraham Lincoln. And the reason he needed to meet with Abraham Lincoln was because his dad had died in the war and his brother had died in the war. So he goes up to the security guard and he says, listen, I need to see Abraham Lincoln right now. I need to see the president. And he said, we can't let you see the president. So this soldier goes and he's sitting in a park near the White House and he's sad. He's, he's depressed because he needs to be home to help his mom plant the garden and so they can have food. He, he can't afford to go to war. He's the last man of his family. So there's a little boy that comes along, and he says, Sir, what's wrong? Because the man was upset. He was crying. He said, I need to go home so I can take care of my mother and my sister because my dad and my brother have died in the war. It's pretty sad, right? He said, But I can't see the president because the security guard won't let me through. The little boy takes the man, and he says, Come with me. So the little boy takes him. They walk through the front doors of the White House. And he takes him to the president. And the president says, Tate, what can I do for you, son? And Tate says, this gentleman needs to talk to you. And so the soldier shared with um, President uh, Lincoln. He says, I need to be home with my mom. I need to help her be able to plant the garden. My brother and my dad have died. I need to be home with my mom. And the president says, I'll give you this waiver so you don't have to fight in the war. So Tate was an intercessor. He was a go-between between the soldier and the soldier and his father, Abraham Lincoln. And that's the way Jesus is for us. That was the role of the priest. The priest was to be someone that went between the people and God. You understand? So today, though, the priest died, right? We read in the passage. The priest died, right? The priests weren't perfect, right? Jesus is perfect. Jesus is forever. And Jesus goes before God on our behalf all the time. All right? Isn't that awesome? So when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, he paid the price, and he was our permanent go-between between us and God. Okay? You understand that? Some other examples of intercessors. A judge. God's going to judge us one day, right? And Jesus is going to be standing as God is the judge. There's a lawyer that goes before the judge, right? Right? But on, our, on, the, on the behalf of the client. So the lawyer is an advocate. And Jesus is standing between us and God, and he is saying, I have paid the price for Connor's sins. He is worthy to go to heaven because he has faith in me. I have paid the price for Connor's sins, and I have paid the price for Jackson's sins because they have repented of their sins, they have trusted me as their Savior, 
And today they can go to heaven because I paid, because Jesus is saying he paid the price. Okay? Y'all understand that part of it? So that's what this passage is saying very, in a very sometimes difficult way. That's one of the things that this passage is saying. That Jesus is standing before God because he paid the price for our sins. So just to review right quick, a human priest, all right, is a man, and you can read this in verse 27 later, but a human priest is a man called by God, all right? But Jesus as our priest is both God and man, right? Right? He was yes. born of a virgin. He's both God and man. The human priest, they sin. But Jesus says our priest, he was perfect. There was no sin within him whatsoever, right? Because he wasn't, he was, he was God and man. He was the one that was, that's what made him worthy to pay the sacrifice for our sins. So the human priest, they had to give sacrifices for their sins and for other sins. But guess what about Jesus? Jesus was the sacrifice. And the human priest, we read in verse 27, what happened to them in the end? They died. All right, they died, or they could only serve for 25 years, and the human priest, they their term ended. Jesus is forever. So we see with Jesus, they went from a change from the old law and from the old priest to the new law, which Jesus fulfilled, to the new priest, which is forever. Right. So we see that Jesus is the perfect way, and we see that that's a good change. So here's three things I want to close with. You ready? You ready? Three things. You ready? We're going to put it into action. All right? So we need to remember that Jesus died for us. Always. So as our priest, Jesus died for us. Who would you die for? I'd die my for family. my family. Your family. Would you die for just anybody on the street in New Orleans? A stranger you never met before. Would you die for that's all. Probably not. That's it's okay to be honest. There's not. There's many people that wouldn't that would say they wouldn't do that. Probably not. But because Jesus. We don't know that but 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 Jesus, Jesus would die for that person, <laughs> and Jesus would die for you. That's what makes him the best of all. The best priest of all is that he's willing to sacrifice himself for everybody. Okay, he did sacrifice himself for everybody. The next thing I want us to understand. Is that Jesus is praying for you. Do you believe that today? Mm. And that God's son. The one going between us and God is praying for us. There's a great Bible verse. Romans 8.34 Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God. Who also makes intercession for our sins. Remember that word intercession? He's going between us and God. Jesus is praying for you today. And Jesus is praying for me. Isn't that cool? That's how personal Jesus is. So Jesus as our priest, right, our forever priest, is going before God on our behalf. He knows what you need before you need it. You know that? Before you even know it, Jesus knows what you need. And he's praying for you today. I was praying this morning. I, I was praying specifically. This is the coolest thing. Isn't this cool when you happen? I was praying specifically this morning for one certain thing. All right? And I was praying. I said, God, I need you to make this happen. I got a text and it happened. Isn't that cool? Now, not all my prayers are answered that way. But that's what happened. I what, was praying what? yesterday. I, I don't want to share right now. But I was praying yesterday for something very specific to happen. And then I got an email that it happened. Alright? Now, I, I'm not going to tell you it happens that way all the time. But I'm telling you that when we go to God in prayer, God is, Jesus is also praying for us before God, and he's going to work to make things happen, okay? So don't you think if Jesus is praying for us, it's important for us to pray for others? Yes. You know, we can be intercessors for other people. I, tell pe I talk to people all the time, and I tell them I'm praying for them. I, they tell me their problems. They tell me something's going on in their life. And I go, hey, I'm praying for you, and I mean it, because I know that God can answer their prayers. But know this, too, that Jesus is always with you. Do you believe that Jesus is always with you? Yes. I do. I believe that Jesus is with me every day. Brother Clark preached on John chapter 21 Sunday. Do y'all remember that? I don't know if y'all remember that or not. He talked about Peter and the disciples. They went out in the boat and they were fishing. They, they, they were fishing on one side of the boat. Uh, they didn't catch any fish and Jesus was on the bank. They didn't know it was Jesus, but there was a man on the bank. He said, cast your nets out on the other side and pull the fish up. 
and they pulled up so many fish that 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 it was so heavy they could barely drag the nets back to the shore. Do you remember that story in the Bible, in John chapter 21? And it was after Jesus had died on the cross, and it was after he rose from the grave, and the disciples went fishing, and there was Jesus on the bank, and they didn't even know it was Jesus. They didn't even know Jesus was with them. But at that point in time, Jesus was with them. And because Jesus is our priest, Jesus is always with us. Even when we don't think about it, even when we don't realize it, Jesus is always with us. Isn't that cool? You know why Jesus is always with us? Because his way is perfect. Okay? You got any questions? No? I answered them all? Yeah. All right. Well, let's close in prayer, and that will be all that we have today. Lord, we thank you for your great God that you are. We thank you for Jesus. And we thank you that Jesus is the perfect way. I pray in all that we do that we do it for you and for you alone. I thank you for these boys. I thank you for all that are listening, Father, and watching. And I pray, God, that you'll speak to them. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.